Hey gang, Chase here, and today we're going to discuss shooting with multiple cameras. We'll be sharing some tips and techniques that can be applied to a variety of multicam styles to ensure that your next shoot is a success. One of the earliest steps for any shoot is choosing the right camera. While that can be a topic unto itself, here are a couple things to keep in mind. Try to use the exact same cameras if possible. Not only will your footage's overall look match from camera to camera, but it will also make it easier on your crew because they're all working with the same gear. Just be sure to match white balance, frame rate, ISO, shutter speed, and the picture profile on each. Now, in the event you're using two different cameras on your shoots, there are some steps you can take to make things easier for matching in post. Try to use the same brand of camera. There is a unique look and color science from each camera manufacturer, and cameras with different manufacturers tend to have drastically different looks, making matching them up difficult. If you have no other option than to shoot with two totally different cameras, shooting in a log profile or another kind of flat profile can help make shots easier to match up later. Another potential issue when using two different cameras may be a difference in resolution. Say camera A can shoot 1080p, but camera B only shoots 720p. You're now forced to down-res camera A to 720 and output your entire project in that resolution, unless you chose to upscale that smaller image, which of course leads to a loss of quality. Unless your camera lenses are fixed, you'll need to decide what lenses to shoot on as well. Much like cameras, different lenses tend to have varying looks, so try to get a matching set if possible. Same brand, same level of quality. Remember to match each lens's exposure. Notice that I didn't say to shoot at an identical f-stop, because while shooting at the same stop from camera to camera is the easiest way of ensuring matching exposures, there are also times when you may not want that. If you're shooting your wide at a 5.6, but find you'd like a shallower depth of field on your close-up, you could add an ND filter and open that up to a 2.8 that way, your effective exposure is still a 5.6, but you have the depth of field of a 2.8. There are a variety of ways to ensure that your camera stays synced for your shoot. The first you could use is timecode. This will allow your editor to quickly and easily sync by timecode in post. Another method for syncing is known as genlock. You're essentially feeding a signal from multiple cameras into a device, most often a video switcher, that syncs them all together. The simplest method of syncing both audio and video is with a slate. Roll your audio, followed by your video. Someone on set typically reads the information on a slate first, stating the scene shot and take, and then claps the sticks together, creating an audio-visual cue for the editor to sync to. Don't have a slate? A hand clap can work just as well. Finally, if on-site syncing is forgotten or just too difficult to accomplish at the time, syncing software such as Pluralize can be used in post. This analyzes all of the camera's audio waveforms for similarities and uses those similarities to sync all the clips together. Now let's look at how you might plan your coverage for a documentary or ENG style interview. For this scenario, let's assume you're shooting with two cameras. In shoots of this nature, it's most common to have camera A locked off in a talking head. Framing this establishing shot varies depending on the DP's taste, of course, but typically it frames wide enough to include the subject's head and shoulders and some environment. The B camera is then free to get close-ups of the subject speaking for a nice cutaway or to wander, capturing intimate details such as body language. When filming live events, the more cameras you can employ to cover the action, the safer you'll be. Consider a concert. Generally, there are cameras that cover 360 degrees of the action from very wide to very tight angles. In situations like this, where the action can be unpredictable, it's always just best to cover all those bases and be prepared for anything. But trip and fall when we walk, we talk for miles. In narrative filmmaking, however, an experienced director usually has an idea of exactly how they'd like a scene to play out, so they shoot only the coverage necessary to execute that vision. In situations like this, you really only need one camera. However, there are times when shooting narratives with only one camera is impractical. For instance, scenes with stunts and large-scale action would be very difficult, not to mention very exhausting, to constantly shoot, reset, and reshoot from different angles. Capturing multiple angles at once 
can also help prevent your talent from becoming worn out from doing take after take after take. Imagine a scene where the coverage you've planned consists of a wide shot, and a two shot, and an over the shoulder, a medium shot, a close up, and an extreme close up. You might think that's only six shots, but from an actor's point of view, that's six performances that they have to give and have to be spot on for. That's assuming you only need one take for each. With coverage like that, by the time you reach the close up, your talent might have already given their best performance. Nothing, I looked at the camera. <laughs> When editing multiple cameras, there is a function in most nonlinear editing systems called multicam sequencing. Essentially, what this does is it marries all of your camera angles into a single sequence and into a single viewer window, allowing you to preview those multiple clips simultaneously. Much like live switching, only it isn't live. You can make a cut at the desired point, click the camera you'd like, and you're moving forward, easy as that. This can be a major time saver because instead of viewing each angle one by one and identifying the moments that you'd like to use, you can just compare them all at once. As a workflow, it's simply more efficient. And there you have it. Hopefully these tips will make your multicam shoot less of a chore and allow you to spend more time focusing on the creativity of your piece. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, b &H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.